What's up, people? Welcome back and hello. Nice to see you again. Today we're doing a cinematography breakdown of a particular scene that I am extremely proud of. Uh, it is a very simple setup, but I found that it was very effective and I just, I really like it. And the scene that we're gonna be going over comes from a project that I recently shot with Xylograph Films and director Dale Kim. I have done a few projects with him and have talked about him on this channel a few times. He is one of my favorite directors to work with and uh, he is one of the most talented filmmakers that I know personally. And whenever I get the opportunity to work with him, I know that it is gonna be an amazing project. And I also know that I have to gear up and get ready to go to boot camp. Yes. Whenever I'm up in Buffalo shooting with them, it is always an experience. And honestly, it is like a big boot camp training session that I have come to love because I don't get to experience something like that very often. And it pushes me to a place that allows me to grow, become better. And I think as a DP, that's one of the most important things is to find people that you want to work with that inspire you that push you to be a better person to be a better artist to just grow and i can definitely say that working with them i i feel that for sure so let's dive right in when i went up to buffalo the most recent time we shot two projects and we're going to be going over one it is a short film commercial a bit of a narrative piece and it is called unexpected it is a emotional christmas kind of commercial and not going to give away too much about it. You could just click the link in the description to watch the full thing. But here are a few clips to kind of just walk you through what we're going to be going over today. These three shots right here are what we're going to be going over today. And no, it is not the most extensive lighting setup that we had for this entire commercial, but I just want to talk about this one because it is so simple and sometimes simplicity is best. So first thing we're going to be talking about is just the camera. We shot on my Ursa Mini Pro G2 and we paired that with the Zeiss Super Speeds 25 millimeter lens. Yes, we stepped away from the classic Sigma and uh, did a little nice lens action. And honestly, the super speeds are a beautiful, beautiful lens. It has such a organic kind of creamy, I guess, feeling to it that the Sigmas just don't have. And that in and of itself lended really well to the softness of the story that we were telling and the emotional side. So I think the super speeds paired with the Ursa created a absolutely beautiful image straight out of the gate. And then paired with the the type of lighting that we were able to accomplish, I really think that we uh, we achieved a, a very beautiful looking image. Also, I just want to give a quick shout out to two people that really helped this project come to life in terms of lighting, because lighting is one of the hardest things to do on set. And when you don't have a massive crew to help you, it takes a toll on the people that actually do the lighting. Um, so. Aaron and Mark, you guys are absolute rock stars and were able to really, you know, accomplish something beautiful with a minimal crew and two PAs to help you out. So I really appreciate your guys' hard work and accomplishing the lighting that we were going for. And yeah, you guys are just rock stars. Thank you. So this was actually, this is not a therapist's office. This is just some little man cave office in some basement of a, uh, a gentleman's house and we transformed it kind of into you know looking like a therapist's office in a way um, and a lot of that has to do with just kind of it being a little dark and hiding certain things but that's all part of it and when we started lighting this we wanted it to be a bit more of a warmer golden kind of you know sunsetty ish vibe and it the goal wasn't it for it to be like happy golden hour sunset beaming in there's just there still wanted to be mood and emotion but I think the warmth that came with that color and that kind of vibe is the, the look and the atmosphere that we were going for additionally the other thing to consider was that 
yes, we wanted this golden warmer look, but we were also shooting, I believe it was at like seven o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night, maybe something around there. So there wasn't any sunlight at all. We had to recreate it. The two lights that we set outside to recreate this kind of golden warmer look was the Forza 500. I had the Fresnel attachment to it and I also added a CTO gel. The next light was the Nanlite Forza 300B, which is their bi-colored version. And we set this to the warmest color temperature. I believe it's 2700, uh, whatever the warmest color temperature is. We wanted that to match as closely to the CTO as possible. And the only thing that we had that helped benefit us and the look that we were going for was the window had blinds to it. So we could really control the shape of the light, the direction of the light, and how much light was actually coming through. We had it closed pretty good, so it was almost like the light was hitting the floor, but it was still creating a nice warmth and a nice glow to that window that we were looking for to help motivate our key light, our backlight, and use that light as the motivating source for the rest of the setup. So the next light we're gonna be talking about is our key light. And a new light that I just acquired is the Intellitech Mega Light Cloth. And the reason why I wanted to invest in this light in particular was because I was also looking at light mats. Light mats are something that I rent all the time. Um, they're amazing, like just LED mats, they're super light. The CRI is very high. The, it's just a beautiful light, but they're very expensive. They're, I think they're around $4,000 each. Um, and that's when I came across the Mega Light Cloth by Intellitech. It's a very similar structure, very similar build, similar style, very high CRI, but it's about half the price. I think I bought it for about $1,800. And it is extremely light. This, it's, it's three and a half feet by four feet. And it comes with a softbox and a grid already which is absolutely amazing, especially for controlling the light. And we're gonna be talking about that because that is the main reason that we were able to achieve the look that we got is because of certain things in front of the key light. So when placing your key light and designing where you want that key light to come from, it's really important to understand where your camera is, the camera position, the composition, as well as where that motivating light is coming from that you're using that key light for. And for example, in this one, the window is on the left side of the room. So that is pretty much where I placed the key light was in a very similar position to where the window was to help match that actual direction of light. The first composition that we went for in this scene was over the shoulder of the therapist and aiming towards the two talent, the mother and the father. So when positioning this key light, I didn't want it to be too frontal. I wanted it to be a little bit sidey to create some shape and some contrast. So I moved the key light a little bit more to the right hand side towards that wall, just illuminating it enough so it was a decent fill on the left side of both of their faces, but still crept across a little bit and hit their right side enough. The next thing that we did to help emphasize that shape and contrast was add a six by neg on the left side of the frame just to increase that contrast, just increase the, the shape and the shadow side. And going back to the key light again, the other thing that really helps with light spill and control of light is having a grid or an egg crate on top of your softbox. The reason why having an egg crate or a grid is really important is because it reduces the spill against the back walls and it really creates a more directional key light and a very soft source. So if you want to really start shaping your light and being able to control it as much as possible, I highly recommend looking into grids or egg crates. So the last light that we added was a Nanlite Pavo tube, and we added, again, barn doors or a grid to that. And the reason is because we didn't want it to spill too much against the back wall and illuminate as much as possible. We wanted to control that light. So adding the barn doors helped us control the light and only illuminate a certain section that we really, really wanted to. And for the three angles that we got in this scene, the Pavo tube's main purpose was to illuminate the background and just add a little bit more detail in the background that we couldn't see if it wasn't there. The secondary reason for adding that tube was just to add a nice little hair light. So a quick tip, something that I wanna note that I find is really important and sometimes overlooked is moving your key light relative to where the camera is positioned. Now, going back to the first frame here when we're facing the two talent, since we're on their face on a more three-quarter angle and a little bit more frontal, we can get away with playing the key light a little bit more sidey and allowing for that contrast, allowing for that shape to kind of be a little bit more dramatic. Now, going to the second angle here, where we are straight profile on the mother, 
If we had that light in the same position that we had it in the first composition, there would be zero detail in the right cheek, on her nose, on the other side of her face. It would just fall off to just complete blackness. And something that I like to do and something that is pretty standard among cinematographers that I've come across is moving the key light more center as you move to the profile. So the reason why you would want to move the light more center and more in front of the talent is because it would wrap a little bit more. So when you are in that profile, you do see a little bit of a light leak on her cheek. You see a little bit more detail and it's a little less sidey and it's a little bit more uh, flattering and appropriate for the setting. The last composition that I want to talk about is the last angle here, shooting in between their shoulders and showing the uh, therapist adoption lady. The reason why I find this frame to be the most interesting is because I didn't really light her face and her face wouldn't be lit in this situation. She's backlit by that window. But what I did to help emphasize some more shape into her face and just create a little bit of an exposure was take that key light, which was more center because we were shooting the profiles on the husband and wife and move it a little bit more on a side towards the wall again. And the reason why I did that was because it would now hit kind of her cheek and just kind of create some shape around her cheekbone and the right side of her face, just to help emphasize that, just so it wasn't like flat here. And I think it's important to note that it might not be important to see the person's face entirely or see every little detail in a person's face. I think sometimes mystery is good. And uh, regardless of that, I still think that we were able to create enough of exposure in her face to see some of the detail without making it seem artificial or fake. So that's it for today's video. Again, I apologize for not being as consistent as I used to be. Uh, fortunately though, I'm very busy as a DP right now and I'm trying to work on finding my work-life balance. Um, it's pretty non-existent to be honest with you. Hopefully you guys can still find value in these smaller videos and these shorter videos. Um, yeah, I appreciate your guys' support all the time and uh, have a great day. Peace out.